Welcome to St. Lucia Off the Beaten Path. I always like to be prepared before traveling, but I wasn't able to find any Off the Beaten Path videos about St. Lucia. So now I'm back from my trip and I'm ready to tell you all you need to feel fully prepared. In this video, you'll find lots of helpful tips for traveling without a tour company and the little things that no one tells you about that actually make a huge difference. And most of all, You'll hear about a major aspect of traveling around St. Lucia on your own that might be a deal breaker. So pay close attention and then you can decide whether you really want to do this yourself. You'll learn about the lesser frequency beaches, some memorable places to check out that you've never even heard of and how to get there, local gems to eat at, driving in St. Lucia, and what it's actually like dealing with locals. So let's go! You've always admired the breathtaking hills and mountains of St. Lucia. Now imagine traveling up and down those green hills. Do it with a 4x4 ATV tour. By the way, nearby you'll find something truly off the beaten path, which I'll tell you about later. In addition to the one-of-a-kind views of the majestic landscape, we were able to drink from this freshwater spring, see local people farming coal, ride past local farms in bamboo, and see many trees of nutmeg and cinnamon and eat cocoa fruit. Check this out. Okay, this is called a jungle emanem, which I would want y'all to do for me. Just grab one of them seeds, you suck out the juice out of it, but do not swallow the seed. You okay. suck out the juice and you chew away the seed. Now you feel the same cocoa, that same seed, this is what we use to do our cocoa stick. The terrain varies and looks like this, this, or this. Unlike ATV riding in the Canadian Rockies, these trails weren't anywhere close to the edge of any cliffs, so I felt pretty safe and we went at a relatively slow pace. I will say that if you come from a family of stubby fingered women like me, reaching to press on the lever or gas made my hand numb, so if you have any arthritis in your hand or any other type of issues with your hand, it may be challenging to do this for two and a half hours with some breaks in between. The tour guide made some adjustments to help, but my hand had a hard time acclimating. At the end of the day, the payoff is a completely different perspective of the piton like this. Driving the ATV through the local neighborhoods to get up and down the hill was also a really amazing opportunity because you get to see the beautifully painted and decorated St. Lucian homes and local businesses too. Those postcard-worthy mountains and hills is what brought you to St. Lucia. This is a fun and extraordinary way to explore them from an insider's perspective. Did you know St. Lucia also has hot springs? Of course it does because it's a volcanic island, but it's not commonly known so I wanted to make sure I tip you off about it. Jerusalem baths can be found just down the road from the ATV to Ryle Waterfalls tour. Just ask one of the guides to drop you off or show you the way. Our guide actually hitched a ride with us and walked us down to the baths where the owner was maintaining the property. Now because this is a property being slowly developed, the hike there was not as well paved and established as a Superman waterfalls hike, so you're walking over a lot of narrow and uneven paths and rocks. There was one little moment where we got to walk over this nice little babbling brook. Eventually, we got there. There isn't a change room and the washrooms were... Let's say, make sure you don't have too much to drink before you come. Or hold it in if you can. So the cool thing about these hot springs is that there are three different baths with three different temperatures of water. Hot, warm, and cold. And you can alternate from one to the other at your will. Let's hear more about this hidden gem from the owner. I first started in 1998. You know? And gradually, you know, we're building up. The first pool is um, warm up. Second one is just slightly cooler. And the third one, which is the little one, is more cool. Mm -hmm. Cooler. Or arthritis, rheumatism, back ache, back shoulder. Stiff neck, you know, and 
plastic bottle. Where does the water come from? It is a vein from the mother's of the spring. There's the center. So who built this one? Who built it? It was myself and my late brother. Oh. Yeah, we were the two the two of us who first started. And he passed away in Trinidad and I continued. So you know I would say more like we were born here on this estate and grew up as a little boy as well. Yeah. Okay. I think this is not that, it's not that um, accurate because, uh, mm. because we're not dealing with the, the tourist, the tourist boat. Yes. So there you have it. It's only a few dollars and it feels like you're at a natural spa in the middle of the jungle, hidden from the chaos of the world. What more could you ask for? Superman Waterfalls is located on a private property. We were lucky enough to run into this resident. And as it is a private property, you should be prepared to pay an entry fee. The hike is on average 30 minutes. It might be more or less depending on your fitness level. Coming back up after is a little bit more challenging and takes more time. But you can take your time, you're on vacation. At times there's wooden banisters like this and ropes that you can grab onto if you need it, but it's mostly without. If you're going with a guide, they'll explain to you lots of the plants and fruits along the way. Finally, you'll reach that little piece of St. Lucian Paradise that you've worked so hard for. Below the water, there'll be natural mineral sulfur mud. After rubbing it all over your body, you can let it dry as you enjoy the beautiful view. Trust me, it's, it's amazing. You can finally take a dip after it's dried off. The water comes up to your waist. You can feel the mud and rocks and sticks and leaves underneath. It's not jagged rocks though, so you're good. And after that hike, you can get a good shoulder and back massage under this 50 foot waterfall. Once you've had enough fun there, you can head over to the iron water bath and relax. Observe the little bits of minerals floating and take in this view. So if you want to live stream or video call your people to brag, there is reception for data down here. Well, Wi-Fi? Wi-Fi down here? Sorry guys, no luck. If you seek out international beaches with unique sand, I mean, look at this smoky gray sand, a collector's dream. This is the place for you. This beach has an amazing space for a picnic with loved ones and if you have children, or if you like to collect rocks, this place will blow your mind. This is Sabusha Beach, located smack dab between point A of Soufriere and point B of UVF Airport. So let me tell you how to get there. Off the main road on the island, once you hit the Schwazel area, yeah, never mind the dude wielding a cutlass, I'm sure he's just going to work. We're in the West Indies, it's as common as a hammer over here. Just turn in when you see the quartz bus stop. See that mountain in the distance? That's our North Star. Keep heading down the road until you hit this T-junction where you see these houses, then turn right. Keep heading down the road till you see this bridge that definitely looks like it should not be crossed with your vehicle. So go ahead and cross it with your vehicle very carefully because it's kind of narrow. Follow that curve right around the road until you reach the literal fork in the road. Head off to your left and keep driving towards that mountain. Soon enough you'll see a break off to your left which has a boulder rock. That's your spot right there. Take a sharp left turn down that pathway lined with more boulders until you reach the end. Park anywhere off to the side in the sand where there's a clearing. You'll notice this beach is mostly isolated. 
The reason is because one, it's not commonly known among tourists, it's off the beaten path, and two, a few years back there was a bus transporting pedestrians at night. The driver didn't realize there was a curve in the road and unfortunately he drove off the cliff and they all passed away. So the locals aren't huge fans of this beach because of that incident. Let's say they believe it has bad luck or is cursed. Now some still do come hang out here and swim though. I absolutely loved walking on this beach because of all the colorful rocks. I honestly never seen anything like this. I spent like half an hour walking back and forth trying to pick out the best rocks for the little rock collectors in my life. And these are no pebbles in your shoe. These, these are champion stones washing up. I mean, look at this. Drop by the Sabwisha Beach even just to collect some of the one-of-a-kind sand in the Caribbean and practice some mindful meditation as you wonder at the variation in colors and patterns of the stones washed up ashore. This is not to be missed. Have you ever seen chocolate brown sand? Well, I haven't, and I was able to see it at Hummingbird Beach, located on the edge of Sufriar Town, where you'll find some parking at the end of the street outside the beach area. Hummingbird Beach is primarily accessed by locals, so unlike other touristy beaches, it has a laid-back community vibe to it. The nice thing about this spot is that it has a number of shops, including small restaurants, where you can get local food while listening to music of the West Indies. One thing that you'll love about this beach is that it gives you that amazing view of the Piton from a quiet beach without the crowds spoiling the utter bliss of the moment. It was also a unique experience for me to swim in its emerald green waters. These are just some of the reasons that you should make sure that you include this memorable beach on your St. Lucia off the beaten path spots to check out. Another off the beaten path beach is Malgratu Beach, also known as Paradise Beach. Heading south from Soufrier, if you head towards Martha Table's restaurant, you will find the entrance to this hidden beach nearby. However, if you're passing by Martha Table's, you've gone too far. And if you're heading down an entrance that looks like this, that heads off to the right, you took a wrong turn just like us. You want to look for an entrance that looks like this. Pass the gate and head down a narrow, unpaved winding road that seems like you're heading in the wrong direction. As long as you're heading downward, you're going to hit the beach area. Eventually, you will reach a small parking area which belongs to the Paradise Resort. To be able to park here, you'll have to patronize the restaurant. So grab a quick bite to eat here or even just some coconut water that you can take over to the beach and then you'll get the thumbs up from the staff that you're okay to leave your car there and enjoy the beach. The menu here looks like this. It's a pretty basic mix of foods you've had before and some St. Lucian dishes. We opted to keep it simple and we just got some coconut water. I don't know about you, but I just love watching them chop away at the coconut until they finally get to the part with the water. On one side of the beach, there will be the resort front, but further down to the other side will be a quiet public area and the setting is very idyllic as your backdrop is a line of trees and essentially what looks like a jungle. And you have the beautiful Petit Paton off to the side towering over you. We really liked the beach here because it was quiet and relaxing and the water was really nice. Definitely recommend this off the beaten path beach. Two kilometers from Castries town is the kind of view you see on a billboard off the side of the highway while you're caught in traffic on a dreary winter day. Vigi Beach. Who knew such beauty and life could be laid out for your enjoyment in front of a cemetery? Find it on the coastline just off of this roundabout where you'll find a gravel stone parking lot at the end of a long straight road. It's a quiet beach more frequented by locals than tourists, and this is exactly what off the beaten path tourists like us are looking for. You won't be nestled at the foot of any mountains here, but you will be lounging on a long outstretched beach with a canopy strip of palm trees. You'll be comfortably floating atop Caribbean turquoise blue waters. 
It's one of the lighter white sand beaches that I've seen in St. Lucia. Look at this paradise. Soon you'll be living that vision you daydream of during those long, stressful hours at work. Lingering on the beach between these two mountains is major bucket list vibes. So this is no off the beaten path type of site, but this way that I'm about to tell you on how you can get there is book a boat tour to a few beach spots and include Sugar Beach in one of them and get dropped off conveniently at the dock. We negotiated a cheap half day tour that took us to the snorkeling area near the beach. And by the way, this boat had no ladder to get back in the boat. They tried to pull me back in from near the motor. It was messed up. I thought I'd never get back in and I'd have to swim to Sugar Beach on my own. So it was not a good experience. So yeah, when you book, make sure it's a boat that has a way to get back in. So now you finally get there and you're lounging between the two iconic mountains. The water is calm and there are some floaties like this for you and your people to hang out on. They're strapped down so you won't be drifting off anywhere. There's one restaurant that's open to the public until they start to prepare for the resort's dinner service, then you're out of luck. You can also snorkel off to the side of the beach, but do it before it gets too late, unlike me. I waited until all the fishies retired to their little corals and I only got to see a few here and there. So make sure you get that in earlier. The other benefit to the boat access method is this. We pushed our time at the beach until sunset so we could get a panoramic view of the island and its pitons against the color changing sky. We were pretty much the only ones out there that meditated on the serenity of those giants being covered in a shroud of darkness. The only drawback to returning after sunset is driving St. Lucia's roads at night. It can feel really uneasy. But let's actually talk about the true off the beaten path experience of St. Lucia, which is cruising the island's curves yourself. Taxis and popular tours are expensive, so unless you have hundreds upon hundreds to spend, you're better off either at one, staying in or near the main town, Rodney Bay or Soufriere, where restaurants and beaches are near, then booking smaller tour companies that will pick you up and drop you off back at your hotel. Or, two, and this one is not for the faint of heart, rent your own car and brave the curvy, obstacle courses of St. Lucia's roads. So before we move forward, here is all you need to know about driving in St. Lucia. But don't worry, I'm going to get into this in detail. I rented a car through St. Rose Auto Rental Service. Info in the description. We got a 2021 Suzuki SX4, which was good for the rough terrain and potholes. It didn't have GPS included, but it had CarPlay which enables you to view your Google Maps on your iPhone through the vehicle's display screen. Okay, one for Apple, zero for Android in this case, but that's all Apple gets. We had an excellent straightforward experience with St. Rose. They met us in the parking lot outside of the UBF arrivals. We had a circle check, paid ahead, and we were off. The thing that I appreciated about St. Rose is that for a small fee of 40 US dollars, they were willing to escort me to my villa in Soufriere. I would highly recommend this to everyone driving here for the first time. This gave me an opportunity to get familiar with the roads and driving on the opposite side with the reassurance of having a local with me. The rental fee and collision damage was much cheaper compared to budget and other major companies out of the UBF airport. And you're getting more personal responsive service with St. Rose. So say you decide to go the rental route like me. Most of the times, though the roads are super curvy, the main road around the island is quite nicely paved. As you head towards Castries, the road gets more worn and you're driving through a gauntlet of potholes. It's hard to drive around them because you don't want to drive on the oncoming car's side of the road because you never know the size and speed of the vehicle coming around the bend. Heading to Castries, the road is more steep. There are a lot of hairpin turns, switchbacks, and curves. You never know what's going to jump out at you around the turn, whether it's an animal or people or a straight drop cliff, a huge truck, that happens a lot. So please take your time. Let the veterans and impatient whippersnappers and young bucks go around you if they need to. You're not as familiar with the route, so safety is your priority. 
When the road was a little longer and straighter, if I felt I was holding people up, I'd pull over and signal to the left so they could go around me. Major tip from my experience, if you're going to be heading out from one town to the next or on a long haul, make sure that you fill up on gas in town before you head out because the gas stations are far and few between. When driving, just hug the left corner of the road but not too closely because there is a straight drop gutter your tires will get stuck in if you head off the road. GPS works generally well and is quite accurate but it's not as easy to follow when guiding you through smaller side streets in the neighborhood or underdeveloped areas and down to the beaches or your rental property that's in a newly paved area. So you might find you'll have some trial and error until you get it right or if you're headed to your rental or tour, you might ask them to meet you somewhere easier to get their help to take you to the tour site or rental, which is what we did. Sometimes the GPS says turn left or right or south and west, so you're like caught off guard, like which way is south? There's cars behind me, which way should I turn? There's not always street names, so you gotta pay attention to the visuals on the GPS for how many meters or how many side streets down you should be turning. Don't be shy to ask the locals for help. They're used to helping us clueless tourists and alerting us when you're about to turn down the wrong one way. So yes, about those one ways, check this out. Sometimes side streets are one way, but there's absolutely no indicator. So we just guess most of the times. And if all cars are parked on one side facing the same direction, we assume it's a one way in that direction. You will learn to judge your accuracy based on people's body language if you head down the wrong direction, trust me. St. Lucia's older roads and streets, and especially in town, were not built for the current amount and size of cars using the space. In some cases, the road is barely enough for two cars to come down in the opposite direction. But then imagine on top of this, you have cars parking on the side of that road like this. I mean, check out this, this tour bus trying to come through this little street. It's not easy, but it takes patience and acceptance. Just have fun with it, put on some good music, and lay back, you're on vacation. Is that a tire filling a puddle? So perhaps you're mentally prepared for managing the curves of St. Lucia's roads in the daytime, but do you think you can manage it at night? Here's your preview. Okay, so now you decide if you want to drive at night or head back before sunset. So here's the rundown on food in St. Lucia. I didn't find the foods as terribly diverse as places like New York or Toronto. So if you're from cultures or actually enjoy cuisine that has a lot of spices and strong flavors like Indian or Thai, St. Lucian food probably won't excite you if you know what I'm saying. But if you're American or European, it probably won't be a huge departure from what you're used to. Common foods include grilled fish and other meats, boiled root vegetables, stews, and rice. Top picks for me were the ripe fried plantain, green fig and salt fish, cocoa tea, and local juices when possible. By the way, if you want freshly squeezed juices, use the term local juices. Otherwise, you'll get store-bought processed juices. And the options for local juices will depend on which month you travel in. From May to November is optimal. The most well-known restaurants for local food and juices are Fado, Big Yard, The Dream, The Beacon, and Martha's Tables. So they say the Caribbean is laid back. Well, you're about to find out how laid back they are when you order a meal there. In some cases, you're at restaurants for two hours and spend only 20 minutes eating. The rest is spent trying to get the waiter's attention, then waiting for your food, and then even to wait for your bill. You wait so long to get served, you wonder if they've forgotten about you. Honestly, in one walk-in restaurant that had no other customers, it took us 20 minutes just to get a soft taco. This isn't about criticism, this is just about adjusting your expectations and helping you to better plan out your day. Call to order ahead if you can, or allocate one or one and a half hours for your meals, two hours if it's fine dining like robots. 
One cool thing about St. Lucian restaurants and tours is that we found out we could contact a lot of them through Facebook Messenger and WhatsApp. So look into this and see if you can book your reservations or tours or even put in your order ahead of time. Now let's go check out some of those local off the beaten path restaurants in a little bit more detail. Plas Cassava is a bakery that sells cassava bread, which is like a dessert. It's located 30 minutes away from Soufriere town and 45 minutes from Castries and randomly located on the side of the road, which I have to say you wouldn't mind so much actually because it has a beautiful, amazing, magical viewpoint there. Lots of great photo opportunities, but you will have to use your GPS to help you find it. Well, what is cassava? Cassava is a root vegetable which originated from South America but it is now grown and used right across the world from Thailand to Nigeria right back to the Caribbean. So why should you come here? Well, because cassava bread is a staple in the Caribbean and clearly at this popular shop that tends to sell out very quickly. Plus cassava's cassava bread is thick, dense, a little dry and kind of chewy, but not too sweet. They're made fresh here and they sell out quickly, so check business hours and arrive early. Flavors include banana, cinnamon, chocolate, guava, cherry, cassava, and smoked herring to name a few. This is a hidden gem unknown to tourists who tend to just hit up the common sites. Class Cassava is serving up a special treat of the West Indies, so please include it in your itinerary and pick up a few to take home for family and friends. They'll appreciate it. Let's head over to Southern St. Lucia where we will find Mama Tilly's Barbecue and Grill located 20 minutes from UVF Airport. Maybe a good place for you to stop off to start off your island vacation just after you arrive. Let's hear a little bit about the business and what you can expect from the lady herself. Yes, Nigeria is in business. Um, you can expect at the time of seasonal lobster, I'm having pork, I'm having curry goat, I'm having barbecue chicken, barbecue fish, yes. Yes, I started it on my own. Up to now, I maintain all my children on the business. Now I'm 62, I feel like I can still go on when God will be ready. We were served up a little bit of everything. Check it out. We didn't put in a particular order or ask the price, and maybe that was our mistake because in the end, we were surprised to be given a bill of 80 US dollars. We polished off our dishes, so we were inclined to pay at this point. What are you gonna do? You live and you learn. So to get to the next hidden gem from Soufrier Town, just head up the hill towards Castries, and just around the corner, you'll find the Beacon Restaurant. It's located on a hill overlooking Soufrier Town where you can head down the steps from the main level and you will get this unforgettable view. We got there early, so we bought some freshly squeezed juices while we waited for the lunch buffet service. We passed the time enjoying this view back on the main level. Mm, you'll feel like a bird overlooking the rolling hills below. Even postcards won't give you this view. At this colorfully decorated restaurant, you'll find extensive options in St. Lucian cuisine. Once all the food was freshly prepared and ready to go, they allowed us to fill our plates. You can look forward to soups, salads, plantain, green fig and garlic sauce, macaroni pie, pasta, sweet potato balls, pumpkin cornbread, Christophine pie, baked chicken and fish and more. We enjoyed it here. The staff was warm, super friendly and hospitable. Make sure you arrive a little bit early and secure yourself a table because this restaurant is frequented by tourist buses. And with a view like this, the huge variety and low cost, it's no wonder why. Yes, definitely include this restaurant in your off the beaten path trip in St. Lucia. The views alone are worth it. If you're looking for local St. Lucian cuisine, you should include Fado's in your itinerary. We knew that this was the real deal because locals were dropping by for takeout. As for us tourists, there's parking out on the street just outside the restaurant. Some people like to judge an establishment by the washroom, so here it is for those who care. Essential off the beaten path traveler's tip, always have a roll of toilet tissue in your bag, no matter where you're going in the world. 
The best thing about this place is that a serving for one would be sufficient for two people. So if you're not sharing, then you'll definitely have some leftovers for later. Like most St. Lucian food, there was a lot of root vegetables, rice, and grilled meat or fish. My favorite thing about Fatal's was being able to sit outside and enjoy this view. We were lucky enough to get fresh tamarind juice, which was really refreshing and tasty. Beware what time of the year you go, because you may not get a lot of fruits and fresh juices if you're going in the wrong season. Just like everywhere else you go in St. Lucia, they take Eastern Caribbean dollars and US dollar. But if you pay in US dollar, you'll get your change back in Eastern Caribbean dollars. So make sure you know the exchange rate. As a chocolate lover, I was excited to try the chocolate menu here at Rabat. Is, is that how you pronounce it? I'm glad I went because now I can tell you the truth about it. Firstly, there are two dinner services and you gotta make your reservation ahead of time. Try and catch the sunset dinner service if possible. It's a beautiful view. The restaurant gives you the impression that there is chocolate with every dish, but what you actually get is little bitter cacao nibs sprinkled in here and there. For the free tasting appetizer, we did get these really cool chocolate based dishes that would not seem as if they pair up. I actually craved the chocolate vinegar bread dipper after I left. Appetizers cost about $12 Canadian on average. That little mound is the cacao nibs. My friend had a tuna dorado tatar. Here is a sampling of the mains and the cost on average is about $20 Canadian. But as you can see, no chocolate here. As we waited for our main dishes, we got to enjoy this view. See, this is exactly why you want to reserve your meal around sunset. Unfortunately, I have to say I was disappointed by this curry dish. It did not taste like curry, the naan was stiff and hard and obviously not enough to eat the curry, and the reita was not reita. My friend had a yellowfish tuna and she seemed happy with it. So let's move forward to what we really came here for, which is chocolate, chocolate, chocolate. I wanted to order everything on this menu, especially to compensate for the lack of chocolate in the previous dishes. At this point, I've earned it. My friend chose the story of chocolate dish. I chose the hot chocolate and the soft meringue peak surrounded in Rabat's chocolate, on top of which, hell yeah, I poured more. So if you're expecting chocolate with each dish, this is not the place. But if you're open to a well-made dinner with a view and some pretty awesome chocolate desserts, this is the place. Just don't get the curry. A really great restaurant with some tasty dishes can be found at a resort actually, and you can totally access it. Just call or email ahead of time to make a reservation. They're pretty good at replying. It's called Bamboo Restaurant, located at Fondue Eco Resort, and you can just pull up and park on site. Yep, this lesser known gem is located just about 10 minutes from Superior Town. It has a really romantic vibe in the evening. The staff service is also very friendly. By the way, have you ever heard of Christophine? I've never heard of it before and I had it here. Wait, let me go Google it. Okay, I just Googled it and it, it's Chayote? Chayote? Have you, have you heard of it? Anyways, it's in quite a few dishes in St. Lucia. This is a Christophine salad. What's even better are these fritters with this sweet and spicy sauce. While we waited for our mains, I got this drink called Past and Present, which was a mocktail of banana, strawberry, and coconut cream. We ended up getting this main dish. This is the steak with mashed potatoes and grilled vegetables. It looks good, right? But well, before I left that night, I had to run back those fritters one time and order a second dose. They were so good. Get them. I recommend this spot for sure. I love the ambiance. Are you looking for the type of villa that is going to give you this view at sunset from your own balcony? With a seemingly endless jungle below? I have just the place for you. It's located just a short 10 to 15 minute winding drive from Soufrière Town, past Hotel and Project Chocolat. Getting up to the property off the main road is truly off the beaten path, rough and unpaved. I mean, this was us trying to get back up there at night. I mean, you want it off the beaten path, right? Here it is. I'm gonna sing the signal for all the traffic so they know which way I'm headed here.
I introduce you to Hermitage Villas. Made of natural stone and green heart hardwood imported from Guyana, South America. This property includes a kitchen, two double bedrooms and a bath on the top floor, a master bedroom here, and two single bed and bath on this floor. In this common area, there's a sitting area, a small pool, ooh, random kitty, sun beds, and a separate sectioned off area for a barbecue and lounge. Once again, never depriving you from this view. Let's look at some of the bedrooms. Just off the common area, you'll find two single beds with its own bathroom. It's generally cooler in this area, but all beds have mosquito netting on it to keep you extra protected. And here's the master. All the bedrooms give you this glorious, unobstructed view of the Catan that makes it feel like it's in your own front yard. Wi-Fi is available, but it's spotty due to the stone walls blocking the signal. And there is one TV so far with Netflix access in the main master bedroom. This giant will fade into the dark sky of the night and will almost seem non-existent. There are no screen windows, so if you open the doors and windows in the morning, friends will fly in and greet you. And I personally love that. If you picked up some groceries from Massey's stores while you're out, oh, another bird, you'll be able to make some gourmet breakfast for you and your family in the kitchen. Full fridge and freezer, gas stove, sink, dishes and pots, microwave when you got those late night leftovers, and of course the perfectly placed dining area just steps below. And the best thing about it all is that this property has cleaners that will come in daily to do the dishes and make the beds. They can even wash some clothes for you for a price. So I recommend this place. Check it out. See if it's the right fit for you. If you're a world traveler, you'll find that locals around the world vary in friendliness and warmth towards tourists. I found St. Lucians to be kind of mm, indifferent. They generally minded their own business and I respect that. When addressing elders, there's kind of a formality of wishing them good morning or afternoon or evening when you enter a shop or restaurant. So do that if you want to do as the locals do. I found that small shop servers, cashiers, and waitstaff don't tend to smile too much or seem to be too interested that you're giving them good business, but more higher end businesses are quite friendly, hospitable, and engaging. As for the accent, when they speak to you, they will speak in order for you to understand them, but if they're speaking amongst each other, it was even hard for me to understand and my family's from the West Indies. The accent's quite thick. Hey, did you know in St. Lucia they surprisingly enjoy country music and even have some local country artists? Listen to this. This is a bar I passed by in Superior Town. But soca music is a big thing here, so if you're trying to catch the vibe while out driving, 88.5 was a great radio station to listen to, though the reception went in and out while I was driving. Also, I caught this pretty cool tune in the streets of Castries. Speaking of driving and locals, directions from locals can seem super vague. Like, turn left at the church or park by the main dock. Like, how am I supposed to know where the main dock is? So ask specific questions like the color of the building, how many meters or how many minutes down, or the shop name to turn at, so you know where to go. Overall, I didn't face any harassment, and I wasn't followed by anybody asking for money. I had a positive experience with the locals in St. Lucia, and I felt very comfortable moving about in the streets there during the daytime. There you have it. I've given you a taste of what the sights, beaches, roads, and meals are like when you're traveling St. Lucia off the beaten path. I presented you with all the tips, tricks, and deal breakers I wish I knew before I went there. Would I do it again? Absolutely. And I would explore even more off the beaten path, perhaps on the east side of the island. But if I could afford a private driver, that would save me the anxiety of driving on the left-hand side of those winding roads and hairpin turns. But now you're ready to make an informed decision if St. Lucia off the beaten path is a good fit for you. Leave your questions and comments below. 
And by the way, when you're traveling anywhere in the world, try to give back to the local communities and charities and schools and orphanages as much as you can. The government and big businesses make a lot of money off of tourists, but rarely do the locals benefit. So let's make sure we give back to them too. If you decide to do St. Lucia off the beaten path after watching this video, come back, let us know if the video helped and maybe share some of your own tips. Enjoy, make wise choices, and most of all, be safe.